today you claim over your life, you decree and declare over your life that you shall get the victory, that God already won the battle when he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. So no longer will we be in a place of lack, no longer will we live a life of defeat. Welcome, beautiful people. I am Vanessa Elaine. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who have been here, welcome back. Today, I want to dive deep into something that we all deal with, but might not always recognize is how the enemy tries to stop us from reaching our God-given purpose and reaching our God-given destiny. I'm going to share with you some ways that the enemy tries to stop you from reaching your goals that God has set out for you. And I'm going to also share ways in how you can also overcome this because the enemy is beneath our feet. And we have to always remember that God has given us dominion here on earth and that the enemy has been made powerless. The only time the enemy has power is when we allow him to have power in our lives, to have influence in our lives. But today is the end of that. Today you claim over your life, you decree and declare over your life that you shall get the victory, that God already won the battle when he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. So no longer will we be in a place of lack, no longer will we live a life of defeat that we are made in his image. So there's nothing that we cannot do with him alongside of us. So if you are a true believer in what that word says, I want you to get out your pen and your paper and write this down because you're no longer going to allow the enemy to win the battle. Okay. The war has already been won, but you keep forfeiting the battle and I need you to tighten up. Let's get into it. I'm going to give you seven ways the enemy tries to stop you from living out the best life that God has for you. The first things first is attacking your identity. He is known for doing this and we allow him to because we never quiet the noise or we never denounce those negative thoughts. That is very important for you to do. Do not allow those negative thoughts to linger because those are not thoughts of God. And you know, if it's not thoughts of God, you know, if it's your own and it's not in alignment with God's word, you know, it's coming from somewhere else coming from a place that God did not tell you to go or coming from a place that is not influenced by God, but influenced by the enemy. He attacks your identity. That is number one. He whispers lies to you because you know, the enemy is the author of all lies that he cannot tell the truth if his life depended on it and his life ain't dependent on it because he ain't worth nothing. So he's going to always tell you a lie and we just have to stop believing in the lie. Stop clinging on to what you've gone through in your life and clinging onto that as your identity, the trauma you've experienced. That is something you experience. I'm not taking that away from you, but the enemy will make you feel condemned for the sins that you have committed when God already forgave you and you're still holding on to the shame. You're still holding on to what has already happened. Pick up your cross and keep it going. That you can no longer live in the past. You can no longer live in that hurt place. You can no longer live in bondage. That you have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I need you to know that and believe that. The enemy will also make you feel like you're inadequate that you're not worthy. And that all has to do with identity. But what does the Lord say about us? And that's how you're going to flip it. He'll make you feel that you're unworthy, that you're not enough. And many a times when we get with people, I'm going to say this because we relationship beings, but when we are in relationship with people that God have clearly said that are not for us and they mistreat us and we choose to stay because it's a choice. Nobody forces us to stay now. And we choose to stay and we only end up getting hurt worse and worse and worse. And it affects our self-esteem and how we view ourselves. And that relationship, the enemy had his way in it because God was giving you clear signs to leave. And being that you chose to stay, now you're believing the lies that this person told you. You're believing that, oh, you're not worthy, that this is as good as it's going to get. Nobody's going to want you besides him or her or whoever the whoever it may be. Or if you have family members or parents that will tell you and talk down on you and say that you're never going to amount to anything. You're just like your mom. You're just like your dad. And if their life didn't pan out to what God had for them, you know that they're putting word curses on you. So then you begin to believe those things and forgive those people because they do not know what they do. They're allowing the enemy to use them, to use their mouths to speak death over your life. But we take it back. We denounce those things and we take back life today. 
And when the enemy attacks your identity, it will make you lose focus. And that's exactly what he wants. He wants you to lose focus on the things of God. He wants you to focus more on your flaws, more on your weaknesses than, than your strengths. You can't even see that you have strengths. And even if you feel like, oh, I don't have any strengths. I'm so weak. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. If you don't have strength, if you feel like you can't go on or you're not... Um, strong in certain areas, call on Jesus. And you know, that might sound cliche to you. Like everybody says this, I don't hear nothing. Listen, when you get into that word and you allow that word to fill you up, it's going to cause a shift in your life. It's going to cause a shift in your mind because that word is alive. That word has power. And the enemy wants you to stay in a place where you're doubting God's given purpose for you. That's one way he attacks your identity. Number two, he tries to distract you. And now this is a big one. When the enemy tries to distract you, it's a subtle thing. It might be things that you even enjoy and then you don't even see that it's really a distraction. Like you going out every weekend, you scrolling on social media. That's a big one. Cause I do, I have to repent for that. Like God, this thing is almost turning into idolatry because if I'm spending more time on social media than I am spending with you, there's a form of idolatry. I'm just keeping it real. And I had to repent. And being in a place of repentance is so important. But like I said, when the enemy is trying to distract you, it's always with things that you enjoy, things that is uh, harmless to say that you may not be doing what you used to do before you got saved. But it, it, it may be subtle things like even going out to help a friend. And you're always going out helping people. You're always going out doing things that are distractions. It is not adding on to you and your purpose. When I say helping a friend, I don't want people to take that out of context because we are made to help one another, right? In community, especially in, in the body of Christ, we are made to help one another. But when I'm saying like overextending yourself and um, people pleasing, being in a place of people pleasing is all a distraction. Sometimes people will call on you like, oh, you made an appointment with God. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to read my Bible for like two hours. I'm going to spend time with God around this time. And then you get a call and this person say, oh, um, I need this. I need that. And it's just like, uh, but I had an appointment with God and it's all a distraction because when you come back, when you spend longer outside helping that person, it turns into something else. And by the time you get home, it's already time for you to do something else. It's already time to unwind. It's already time to end your day. And it's just like, wow, you didn't even spend time with God. You didn't even make the appointment that you had. And you keep postponing it because it's always something after something after something. That's how the enemy will distract you. So social media is a big distraction. Um, unnecessary responsibilities. I'm good for that. Unnecessary responsibilities because sometimes you want to help, right? You will just raise your hand. It, it could be a good thing. That's the thing. Sometimes we are distracted by good things because not everything is a God thing. Just because it's a good thing, that does not mean it's a God thing. Like I recently signed up to feed the homeless and I knew I had so much to do, but I I love feeding the homeless and that's near and dear to my heart. But knowing that I had to spend time with God, I had to join a prayer line, I had all this stuff to do. There was no way that I could fit that in. And I had to record this video and there was no way that I would have enough time if I would have went to feed the homeless. It's a good thing, but it would have been distracting me from my purpose because I literally just had to talk with God a day before and I was telling God like, oh my gosh, this is not panning out. And it's like, you you haven't been as consistent. You haven't been doing what you said you're going to do. You write all these tasks down and you don't complete the task. You don't complete everything on your to-do list because you're always distracted with other things. And I had to come into a realization of that. Like some things, just because it's a good thing, it still can be a distraction if it's taking you outside of the will of God, if it's taking you outside of the plans that God has for you, if it's taking you outside of God's given destiny for you. Just because it's a good thing, that, that does not mean that it's your thing. That's why it's important for us to like kind of pray God's will and not our own because we'll just be picking up things. When the enemy comes to distract you, he wants you to be busy, but you're not really productive. Like you have a million and one things to do. You're all over here. You're so busy, but you're not productive. It's not producing anything. It's not producing real fruit. You're just busy. That is very dangerous because you're busy doing the wrong thing. And it's all a plot to pull you away from God, to pull you away from what God wants you to accomplish. Going on to number three. So another common tactic that the enemy uses to pull you outside of the will of God and make you remain in a stagnant and stuck place is he uses the voices around you, familiar voices to speak what I said before, 
speak contrary to what that word says, to speak death over your life. Because, you know, words have power to give life or death. And these people are being used by the enemy and they don't even know it. So the enemy uses negative voices around you to influence you. And you may think it's not influencing you because you're not listening to them. You feel like it doesn't carry weight in your life. But when you allow these words to consume your thoughts, when you allow these words to consume you, it's going to have influence over you. Little do you know, it'll just happen all of a sudden. You'll just remember that word that was said to you. And it's just a little seed that was planted, a little seed of discord that was planted, a little seed of doubt that was planted. And at the right moment, it will sprout up at the right moment when you lose your job and God is pushing you into entrepreneurship. But the fact that that person said, oh, you'll never amount to nothing. You're a dis now. You're always chopping job from job. You're never stable. And then you lose your job and you'll remember that word that was said over your life. And then you're not even confident enough to pursue the business because you feel like you won't ever amount to anything. You see how that works? And that's how the enemy plays. He plays a dirty game. But we serve a God that's a cleaner. He makes us white as snow. And these people are used to cause doubt and um, discourage you from doing the things of God, doing what God told you to do. Especially if you're new on your walk, you're going to have a lot of people questioning like this new version of you. But this is who you've always been. It's just you allow the world to influence you. And now you're coming back to your rightful place in the kingdom. And that's what people don't understand. This is not a new you. This is who you have always been destined to be. God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he knew the plans he had for you. We allow the world to affect us. We allow the things, the trauma that we experience to make us go far away from God and choose other ways. And But now that we're back in his presence, we're back and we want to live for him, live a lifestyle that's pleasing to him. The enemy is going to be mad at that. Everybody around us is not going to understand why we choose to live this life. And that's okay. But those people are going to also be used by the enemy and they don't even know it. They'll question, why are you doing what you're doing? Once you're constantly being questioned why you're doing something over and over and, and people are antagonizing you, it'll make you feel like less confident in what you actually do if you constantly have to explain yourself. You're like, well, am I doing this right? Especially if you're new to building your relationship with God, you'll question everything that you're doing. And these people don't even, <laughs> don't even have a relationship with God. Well, some may look like they have a relationship with God because they go to church, but they don't have the fruits. It ain't look, it, it ain't that. It's really not. And they'll make you feel like everything that you're doing to pursue God, to pursue a more holy and righteous life is meaningless. And that's a lie. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to think that your work is meaningless so you can go back into the world so you can give up and feel like, oh, you know, I was better off th there. I was better off before I gave my life to Christ. And that's a lie. Listen, you, that's a lie. Don't believe it. Number four, he will create a scarcity mindset. Mm. This is a Big one. The enemy will instill a scarcity mindset, making you think that there's not enough, that there's not enough. Whatever you've been praying for, he'll make you think that there's not enough and God doesn't have what you've been praying for because everybody else has it. That can pertain to money, opportunities, marriage, good friendships, time, or even God's blessings overall in his presence. You'll feel like, no, maybe God doesn't have time for me. Maybe God doesn't hear from me. Maybe I would never be married or maybe I'll never have my friend group that would love me and that are on fire for God that I could depend on that can sharpen me because you know iron sharpens iron people I can trust people I can walk closely with people who I can pray with people who I don't feel condemned or judged by they love on me like Christ loves the church people like that maybe I would never have money to enough to pay my bills maybe I'll always live paycheck to paycheck that's what the enemy wants you to believe the enemy wants you to believe that you'll never get new opportunities that you'll stay in this stuck and stagnant place mm-hmm God called us to live an abundant life and there's scarcity when it comes to God's favor, that God's favor is ran out. Like only certain people can have God's favor upon their life. And God has favor for everybody. If you're a child of God, you have the favor of God on you, upon you, everywhere you go, the favor of God is following you. But the enemy will make you think that, nah, it ain't for you. It's only for them. You ain't worthy of that. He'll make you think that 
you won't have the favor of God to accomplish your goals. This thought will shift your mindset and shift your focus from God's abundance to fear. And you know, we don't, we can't live in fear. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but when you move in fear, it's being afraid of something that doesn't even exist. It has yet to happen. So you're believing in something or you're scared of something that is make believe, is hypothetical, it's all hypothetical. And that's what the enemy wants you to be in a place of fear where you are non-functioning because you're so fearful. And there's a lot of fear around not having enough. And I felt like I was in a season like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to, you know, come out of this. And I just had to like stop living in fear. And that's a constant work because you have to constantly meditate on his word for you to get that scarcity mindset outside, outside of your mind, outside of your heart, because God wants you to live an abundant life. That brings me to number five. He wants to create a fear of failure. Mm, mm, mm. Have you ever felt like since you came to God that everything just went tumbling down or maybe over a course of your life, things haven't been panning out how you expected it to. You had big dreams or you just wanted more out of life or maybe you never even believed that you could have more out of life. But the fear that the enemy instills in us the fear of failure. So it stops you from even trying. And that right there is like chains, living in chains, literally in the spirit. And that's exactly what fear does is allows us to live with chains. And there's only so far we can go when we are chained up, you know, fear of failing, fear of making you believe that failure is your destiny. And this is all you can produce is being a failure because you have failed at things in your life that things haven't worked out. But the thing is, it's not really failure. It's a lesson learned because you got to think about these multi-billionaires, multi-millionaires. All of their stories are the same. Whether or not they have different businesses, but they all have a story of something on their journey where they failed, it didn't pan out right, where they even hit rock bottom and how they just elevated. But they have to go through that experience where they failed. And it's not failure. It's like trial and error. It's the experience. It's the process of getting to your God-given destination, that we all have a destination that we all have to reach. And that right there is where not only we will be blessed, but everybody around us and everybody in the kingdom and people who are not even in the kingdom, we will bless them and we shall show them the love and kindness and the glory of God. And it will shine through us. And the enemy will make you feel like you're not cut out for this journey. And that's where the fear is. That That's where the fear comes from. And that's why he has to instill fear inside of you because he wants to stop you from even going on the journey or even stop you in the midst of the journey. If you find yourself starting something and not finishing or not even ever starting, that's a problem because you're allowing fear to dictate how you move. You're allowing fear to dictate even your relationship with God because you can't fully function in a healthy relationship with God when you are fearful, when you have the spirit of fear on the inside of you because it's a lack of trust with God actually. And this brings me to number six. Mm. This one right here, I know the enemy has attacked me in this way. The enemy attacks you with your consistency and your discipline. Because in order for you to be successful at anything, in order for you to live out the life that God has for you, it's going to take consistency and discipline in all that you do. Everything that God is calling you to do in the season of your life, whether it is whether it is working at McDonald's, whatever it is, you have to do it with a spirit of consistency and discipline and a spirit of excellence as well. That whatever season you're in, you are made to steward it well. But the enemy, what he will do is attack you from being consistent and disciplined so you won't ever learn through your journey because you'll quit too soon. You see, it's all a tactic. He has his little tactics that he likes to do, but listen, we smarter than that. My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. In all thy getting, get understanding. So understand everything that I'm saying. So when the enemy tries to attack you, you'll know exactly how he's coming 
where he coming from and you'll know exactly if this is the enemy. He'll make it hard for you to follow through with the plans, follow through with your ideas, follow through with the to-do list that you wrote down, follow through with the business plan. He'll make it hard for you to follow through with what God told you to do. Like literally, I'm just thinking about it, what popped up in my head. I was supposed to um, go open up a new account and the money has been sitting in a binder and I still haven't gone. The discipline of getting up and doing what you're supposed to do. God is trying to bless you, but the fact that you don't have the discipline and consistency, he can't bless you yet because there's an order that has to happen. You have to be able to maintain the blessing. You have to be able to steward the blessing. You have to be able to carry the blessing. So in order for you to be able to be blessed, you have to have the spirit of discipline and consistency. And like in my other video, I explained that God disciplines his children. He disciplines those he loves. So when the enemy tries to attack your dis the discipline and your consistency, you know that you are a child of God because he would not be messing with you in this way. The enemy wants you to get tired. He wants you to get frustrated. He wants you to be upset and angry at life. He wants you to feel burnt out. So you'll give up. You'll stop working at that thing that God told you to work on. You'll start working up working on the business plan. You'll stop creating content. You'll stop uh, trying to excel in your career because you'll feel burnt out. You'll feel like, oh, this is too much. Like I'm not cut out for this. It's not for me. And it is. The enemy wants you to think that it is not. And he wants you to think that you're inconsistent and you'll build up these inconsistent habits that'll pull you far away from the goal. And he'll hope that you'll lose sight of the bigger picture. He'll hope that you'll lose sight of the dream that God gave you. He'll hope that you'll lose sight of the goal because the goal is what motivates you to start, right? The goal, the end goal is what motivates you. The word that you were given that you were prophesied over, that's what you soon forgot and lose sight of. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to lose sight of those things because he wants you to be so overwhelmed of the feeling of being burnt out. And he wants you to give up. He wants you to forget the vision that God gave you. And we all have to have a vision for our lives. People perish if they don't have a vision for their lives. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And number seven, he'll plant thoughts of comparison. Mm, isn't that tricky? How we're always online comparing our body, comparing our hair, comparing our bank accounts, comparing what we have, what we drive, where we live, comparing even our friend groups, comparing even our mate. If those of you who are married or who have significant others, you're comparing it to someone else and you're coveting your what your neighbor has. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to start comparing your life to someone else so you can lose sight of being grateful for your blessing, being grateful for what God has blessed you with. The enemy wants you to believe that, ah, uh, you don't have much. Look, you don't have nothing compared to this person. And even comparing your journey, your walk with Christ, thinking that you're so far away because you probably don't pray like this person or you probably haven't attained what this person has attained. And it's just like, listen, everybody has their own walk. Everybody has their own journey. Take your time and take your eyes off of your neighbor. That's not what it's for, but the enemy will infiltrate your mind with those thoughts, those negative thoughts that are unproductive. And ultimately with that, it's not just that he's wanting you to compare yourself, but it's bringing forth other spirits, like rooted spirits, like bitterness and even self-pity as well as self-righteousness. Because some of us might think like, oh, we're better than other people. It's not always when you compare yourself, you think that you are less than, but sometimes it's the other way around where you think you're just too much. Like, oh, you just think you're all that. And uh, hey, I do believe you should think that you're all that, but if you're looking at someone else that you're better than someone else because you have attained certain things or because you look a certain way or because you know how to pray a certain way, it's just ridiculous. And the enemy will make you have these other spirits that you're going to be dealing with and they always bring friends. <laughs> In the word, it says, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places, seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. Then it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept and clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. 
and the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. This That's how it will be if you continuously compare your life, compare your, your journey with God, compare yourself with other people. The enemy will rob you of your destiny. When you compare yourself to other people, it'll make you question, is this enough or is this for me? Or is this, this is not good enough. Like I need more. And it's just like, but you have more. You are currently living in an answered prayer. Do you remember you prayed to God about this that you have now? Do you remember that you prayed about that car that you're driving? You prayed about where you live. You prayed about the clothes that you have on your back. You prayed about the finances. You prayed about the job. Do you remember those things? You prayed about it. You're, an you're living in a answered prayer. So don't lose sight of that. The enemy wants you to go outside of the will of God. So he'll make you think like if you're comparing yourself to somebody, you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not moving fast enough. And so you'll start hustling, hustling, hustling. And God didn't call us to be a hustler. God didn't call us to be moving parts and doing all that. I know there are seasons where you're coming up and sometimes that is necessary, but to be in a place where you are restless, God did not call you to do that. God did not call his daughters or his sons to be hustlers. No, because then there's no rest. And that means money has been kind of become an idol because that is what you're chasing. In Matthew 6, 33, it says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added onto you. That you look to God to be your provider. He gives you things that will provide for you. He'll make way, but you don't chase after things to provide for you because then they become your God. But the enemy will make you feel like, am I moving fast enough? Or am I doing well enough? Am I doing enough? And that's how dangerous comparing yourself to someone else is and comparing yourself to other people that you don't even know their story. You don't even know what they had to go through. And it's not to say that God won't bless you with the same things if you truly desire those things. And if it's truly what he has in store for you, it's going to come. But at its appointed time, and you have to realize that God is never going to bless you too soon. It's time and seasons, season to plant, seasons to harvest, all of that. It's, it's, so you got to get into your words so you don't know, so you won't be confused and conflicted. I'm going to give you some ways how to strengthen your identity with Christ and, and how to beat the tactics of the enemy because the enemy is not going to win. Mm -mm. I'm going to help you fight this. We jumping him. This is how we jumping him. I'm giving you the tools. So this is us jumping him in the spirit, okay? Because he's mad at this video right now. He's mad that you're getting this download, that you're getting these tactics, that you're getting these points. So you're not going to fall for the same tricks anymore. So... Pertaining to your identity, I want you to affirm the word of God over your life. Remind yourself of this scripture, Psalms 139, 14, which says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You have to make daily declarations as well. Speak affirmations based on God's word according to your life. Like start to write those things on um, sticky notes, put it around your home, your mirror, your bathroom. Put some sticky notes on your on your phone or your bag and your car. Just use the word of God to strengthen you in this season, to sharpen your mindset and to transform your heart and guard yourself against distractions. Like you have to spend quiet time with God, literally quiet time. And I ain't gonna lie, them quiet times with God be hours because sometimes he, he, after you finish worshiping, reading the word, because the word be juicy. You read the word, you take in notes, you research and stuff. Then you pray. Then you have to sit and wait to hear back from God. And it's just like, mm, sometimes he'll take a little long to talk back now. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll be like, mm -mm. all right, God, come on. I need to hear something back. I done said, all, I done said a lot. So I need I need some feedback. You know, guarding yourself and making sure you you are focused, making sure you are focused on the things of God. And this will help you stay aligned with the purpose that God has for you. And you have to set clear boundaries. Remember what I said, the distractions are subtle and he uses people around you to distract you and even good things will come as an as a distraction. Good things will come as a distraction. So setting up healthy boundaries, limit your time on social media because that scrolling, that idle scrolling, if you're a content creator like me, post, you know, you got to do a little engagement, set a timer for like 10, 15 minutes and get off. Go, go back into that word. You know, you don't need to be scrolling. You don't even need the inspiration because sometimes we're like, I need inspiration. I need to know what's out. No, you don't. If you're doing this onto God for God's glory, the Holy Spirit is going to give you the downloads on what to post. You, you don't need the influence of the world. Keeping it real. Setting specific times to work on your goals as well. You know, being very organized with your time. And it's okay to say no. I always say that. Say no. It's okay. I can't make it. I'm sorry. 
And if you love me any less, because I said no, they ain't got nothing to do with me. They ain't got nothing to do with you. If you say no and you can't absolutely make it, listen, it's unnecessary to make these commitments that are getting you out of alignment, that are distracting you from fulfilling God's purpose for your life. It's not worth it. Sorry, it will never be. The enemy loves to keep you busy, but not productive. And you got to realize that. So it's okay to say no. Surround yourself with positive people, people who know the word of God, not just positive, right? But know the word of God and truly live according to what that word says. Cultivate a supportive community. And you, if you don't have it, it's okay. It's okay. This is the time where God is probably trying to sift some things out of you so he can prepare you to be in a great community. This is the time where you go after God. And there's things that you can join in church. If you don't have a church home, I suggest find one. This is the perfect time to work at church and be active in church ministry. And that's how you'll build community, getting, putting yourself out there, you know, and being active um, and speaking life over yourself. You know, when these negative voices try to counteract what God already told you, you got to immediately cast it down with scripture. Don't forget Romans 8 31 says this, if God be for us, who can be against us, period. And that's a powerful reminder. And I want you to remind yourself of that every time the enemy tries to attack you in your mind. And number four, listen, you got to trust in the abundance that we serve an abundant God, an abundant God. He has an overflow, an influx. He will never run out, never, ever run out. Ever. You got to practice gratitude and being grateful for what you have right now and know that more is on the way. And you got to reflect on this scripture. Philippians 4, 19, it says, may God, my God will meet all of my needs. My God will meet all of my needs. Meditate on it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but meditate on that. Philippians 4, 19. And also conquer fear of failure. Sometimes it's not going to go as planned, but that doesn't mean it's, it's the end. Get back up. And continue on this journey of success because you will be successful because that's what God has for us, each and every one of us. That's what his word says. We all make mistakes. We all make stupid decisions. Hey, I've been there. We all make stupid decisions while on this journey, okay? And you just have to see them as a part of your journey, your success story. Listen, you could write a book about it. I would love to read it, okay? Because I love testimonies. It's a part of your testimony. And remember this, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16 says, though a righteous person falls seven times, they rise again. Though a righteous person falls seven times, they rise again. You will rise again. This is not the end. Remember that. And you just have to pray for courage and casting down the spirit of fear. In Joshua chapter one, verse nine, it says, be strong and courageous. Remain in that mindset of being strong and courageous. And that will build your confidence the right way. And you got to commit to consistency. I'm, I ain't going to lie. Committing to consistency, whether it's small little things that you are achieving, small little goals, but just commit to it. Be committed and being disciplined to carry them out to the finish line. Make it to the finish line. Finish everything that you start. And there's some things that you may have to go back because you forfeited before because you allowed the enemy to win. Go back and finish, okay? Don't leave anything undone. Sometimes God won't bless you with your next until you go back and finish everything that you left undone in the last season. Pray about everything and make sure God is calling you to finish certain things. You know, break down your larger goals into weekly little tasks that you have to do. Like nothing should overwhelm you. Everything is achievable, especially if God called you to it, knowing that. And you have to pray for strength. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. God is an anchor. So be anchored in God. Ask God to renew you of energy so you can finish it, so you can be consistent, so you can have that enthusiasm when you're feeling burnt out. And you got to come back comparison with contentment. Being content, okay? You have to practice contentment. You have to be content with what you have right now and stop coveting what your neighbor has. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a great future, plans to not harm you, but give you a great future. I'm paraphrasing, but you know the verse. It assures you of God's plan for you. No need to measure it against anyone else's because God's plan for them is theirs and God's plan for you is still Great is no comparison. And you got to pray without ceasing. Now, this is a big one. Praying without ceasing. Armor up with prayer. You got to armor up with prayer. I always talk about building your altar, like building an altar of prayer, building a lifestyle 
through prayer and even fasting. That's going to bless your life too. Learn to fast. Learn to, you don't need to eat. Listen, and real fasting is just water. I ain't going to, I know y'all like to say Daniel, but you know, it's still you strengthening uh, your spiritual life in some way, but you know, you got to increase it to only water. You can do like from six a.m. to 3 p.m. Do it like that. You know, start small until you go 24 hours, a few days. You know, you do. You can do it. Trust me, you can do it. You're, you'll be surprised how long the body can last without food. When you feed in that body that word, it says that man shall not live on bread alone. And prayer is the greatest weapon that you will have to fight any spiritual attack. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Put on the full armor of God, that prayer life. Stay in your word. You got to stay in your word. The word of God is like a sword against the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. When you fill your mind with truth, there's no room for lies. So you got to fill your mind up with the word of God. And you just got to let the Holy Spirit lead. Let the good Holy Spirit that is a gift from Jesus Christ himself, let him lead your life. Deny the flesh deny the flesh. The flesh don't want nothing good. Nothing good. Okay. Ask for guidance and wisdom and a sound mind. Pray for the Holy Spirit to give you discernment, to sharpen your discernment in every decision that you're going to make and strengthen you to overcome any spiritual attacks. Be intentional about listening, listening to what the Holy Spirit is trying to reveal to you because the Holy Spirit is alive and, it's, and he's breathing and he's speaking. Okay, it's not a dead thing. It's not a ghost. It's, not, it's a real thing. Listen for God's voice. And allow him to guide you. The enemy's power is nothing compared to God's power. He is made powerless. God is working in you and God is doing a new thing in your life and understand that. I hope this video blessed you. I hope you are able to understand. And if you need to continuously watch this video, share this video with your brother, or your sister that have been under attack or just need a word of encouragement or just need to understand the tactics of the enemy. I want you to share this video with at least five people. Do it now. Share it with at least five people. And also if you, you can shop my brand, that's how you you will support me and I greatly appreciate it. I want to say a thank you to all, everyone who has given through the super chats, who has given to me on, on Cash App. I want to say thank you to Sophia Rams and uh, Dedeen, Did, Dedeen Garrett. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm probably not. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thank you. I see everybody that gives and I'm so appreciative. I don't care if it's a dollar. I'm so grateful that you chose to sow into me, sow into this ministry. This is what it is. I, that's what they said to call it. I said, it's a YouTube channel. Everybody keep telling me it's ministry. Oh God. Ciao. I don't know. And just remember, when you feel like you're under attack by the enemy, I want you to pull up this video and I want you or go back to your notes and I want you to remind yourself of who you are and who God has called you to be, that you ain't missing nothing. You ain't lacking nothing, that you are on your way to what God has for you. If you are if you are not already living in it, you are. Literally, you are already living in the promise of God because you made it. Will try to destroy you before, will try to keep you captive, will try to keep you in chains. You have broken free by the blood of Jesus Christ that you have been set free and that you are living in freedom. That is a blessing that you are coming into the knowing of who God has called you to be. You have come so far. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that you are little because you are big because you serve a big, big God. And I want you to stay encouraged and motivated that this walk is not easy, but it is so worth it because you have to understand that we are carrying such a standard, such a weight. God deserves all the glory and praise. And how do we give him the praise and the glory? By living a lifestyle that is pleasing to him, by loving our neighbor, by not believing in the lies of the enemy. The enemy is underneath our feet. In the word it says, we shall trample over the lion and the cobra. The lion and the cobra, you shall trample over the lion and the cobra, they are beneath your feet. Walk and you know that you have dominion. Know who you are in the spirit. Know who God has called you to be. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Bye. Love y'all until next time.